Hello, future RNs. I hope that everyone is chilling with some snacks right now. Because I know that learning can really make you hungry or make us hungry. And of course, I also hope that you are getting fully inspired by today's discussions because by the grace of God and the universe, alam natin, alam natin that the time you have allotted for today gets you closer to your goal. Magiging RN style, guys. Tiwala lang, okay? So, let us get to know a little about our next speaker. Our next speaker is Professor Jinke Pantanas. She is a product of Far Eastern University, cum laude, and is a Philippine registered nurse and also a United States California registered nurse. So, parehas ni ni Mom Jem, RNs and US RNs. Now, she is a test preparation expert and she is also a master in various nursing subjects. But today, she will share with us her expertise in diagnostic tests. So, Mom Kai, Julia Montes daw sabi ni Mom Jem. Eh. Mom Kai. Grabe siya. <laughs> Narinig niyo ba ako? Hi everyone. Can you hear me properly? Hi. Yeah. Correct. Okay. How are you? How are you all? I hope you are all great. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, Sir JC, for introducing me. Ayoko yung picture na niya. <laughs> Joke. Okay. So anyway, okay. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon ba to? Good morning, everyone. Okay. Anong ba reto? Okay. <laughs> Sige. Let us now uh, move this. Okay, Ken. Okay, I'm gonna uh, let us move this, uh, please. Okay. I am. Um, I'm afraid. I need to. Um. Um. I need to move it now, guys. Huh? Okay. Let us talk about your diagnostic test. Okay. Are you ready for this? Okay. So, how to study? Okay, your diagnostic test. So, well, okay. If you're going to be um, according Miss Norinda. Okay. <laughs> Yes, okay. What's important is, guys, okay, we have to um, be enticed not only physically, but also mentally. Do you agree? Yes, okay. So, yeah, okay. So, like Mom Jam, okay, I've been with uh, Ariga okay, for, you know, almost a decade, more than a decade, okay, so... <laughs> Don't ask me the age na, okay? Parang pastusan, joke. So, how to study, okay, the diagnostic test? Our framework, okay, would be PPI, okay? So, what do you mean by PPI? You have to know the purpose, okay, after the diagnostic test, okay? We have to know what is it given. Is it given to detect or to visualize the heart, okay? To visualize the blood vessels, is this to detect for the auto saturation or oxygen saturation? We want to know the purpose of the diagnostic procedure because that is what is usually being asked on your examination. Okay? And then, okay, letter P, another letter P, bumabasi letter P. Okay? So that's going to be patient preparation. How to prepare the client? Is the client supposed to be on an NPO status? Is the client supposed to be increasing um, in a glucose intake during the procedure? Am I going to instruct the client to do shampooing before the procedure? Okay. Am I going to instruct my client to shave before the procedure? Well, how will I prepare my client? Okay. Very important. And also, you have your letter I, interpretation of results. So if you give me this result, is it negative, positive? What does it mean? Okay. Is it to be reported? Okay. Or it's normal? Ano ba? Not all positive are uh, report, reportable. Okay? There are positive that is normal. There are negative findings that are supposed to be reported. So we have to avoid any confusion with regards to these um, concepts okay, on your diagnostic test. Well, diagnostic test is just one of the many concepts on our exam. So we really need to be prepared. Do you agree? Yes? Yes, okay. So anyway, okay, so anyway, class, let us move forward. So for example, let us focus, okay, on your purpose. Okay. I'm gonna pull her best heart Okay. Which of the following procedures, okay, that uses a transducer detects polymetallysis? Okay. So yeah, may I just um request everyone to kindly mute yourselves? Okay. Yes, I agree to okay, Miss Grace. Okay. So again, when we talk about your colonitis, okay, what do you mean by colon? Sometimes now we just have to know the term. 
when we talk about your calling, okay, are we going to talk about your gallbladder? Yes. Okay. And when we talk about your teeth, are we talking about gallbladder stone? Yes. So whenever you hear the word um, death, okay, it's meaning stone. Okay, so we are talking about gallbladder stone, cholelithiasis. Okay, eventually, class, this um, cholelithiasis will be leading to inflammation of the gallbladder. Okay, which can be to, which can be to cholecystitis. Okay, so again, those terms, cholelithiasis, when you hear the word lit, okay, we're talking about stone. And then cystitis, we're talking about inflammation on the gallbladder. Okay. However, the question is, which of the following procedures that uses a transducer detects cholelithiasis? Okay, so you have your technique, guys. You have your clue. You have your transducer. Is it A, magnetic resonance imaging? Is that MRI? Letter B, is that CD scan? Okay. Letter C, is that ultrasound? Or letter D, is that abdominal x-ray? Isn't it A? Okay, thank you, Aisha. Okay, and everyone else. Okay, Gentrix. Okay, so we have your correct letter C, ultrasound or ultrasonography. You have the word transducer. Okay, so MRI, magnetic resonance imaging nurses usually, okay, that will uh, give you an image as well as your CT scan. Okay, it will give you image of tissues. Okay, uh, usually image of the cells, image of the organ. Okay, so the reason, uh, the difference is MRI is more detailed. MRI is using, um, uh, using magnetic waves. Okay, correct, correct, Mr. Mark. Okay, so CT scan. Okay, it can be with contrast. It can be without contrast. Okay, MRI is more detailed than CT scan. Okay, but you have your transducer. So if there's transducer, we need transducer gel. Okay, so that's going to be letter C, ultrasound. Abdominal x-ray is not using a transducer. Okay, and of course, an x-ray cannot detect for stone. Okay, so it's supposed to be ultrasound. Perfect. Again, you are all great. So the answer is, yeah, letter C. Okay, so don't forget, guys, MRI, CT scan, it's going to detect for the tissue, okay, for a certain organ, for a certain, um, for a certain uh, trauma, okay, in your cell, in your plant, in your organ. It's just that MRI is more detailed. Okay, moving forward, another one. Next. We have your patient preparation. Okay. So for example, which of the following statements reflect appropriate preparation for the patient for EEG? So what is EEG? That is your electroencephalogram. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, somebody's typing something. Okay. Yeah, that's the formula. Okay. So which of the following, okay, will be appropriate for the EEG electroencephalogram? Okay. Is it A, avoid douching on the day of the exam? Well, you want to ask yourself, is that really related? So we are talking about question and answer agreement. Okay. When we talk about electroencephalogram, we're talking about the brain. Okay. And douching on the day of the exam, well, I'm talking about genital area. Okay. So letter A is not related with your EEG. Letter A is more related to a pop smear. Yeah? Avoid douching on the day of the exam. That might be related to a pop smear. Papa Nicolau smear. Okay? Letter B, tell me if you are allergic to shellfish. Okay. Question, is this specific diagnostic procedure utilizing a contrast medium? Okay? So you have to tell yourself like that. For example, you are reading actually the exam. You have to, you know, communicate with yourself, ask yourself, talk to yourself. Sometimes you need to be psychotic. Okay? Do you agree? Okay? Like that. Okay? You have to talk to yourself. Okay? Is this making sense? Okay? Let me see. Avoid using your deodorant on the day of the exam. Okay? Is that related? Okay? Avoid using your deodorant on the day of the exam. Maybe we can describe this, or maybe we can actually uh, do this, Miss Christita, okay? If you are talking about your mammogram, okay, or mammography, isn't it? Okay. Deodorant, talcum powder, okay, lotion on the day of the exam, and you are actually placing that, okay, near your breast, okay, that's gonna be uh, leading to inaccurate result. Okay, or misinterpretation, and we don't want that to occur. Okay, so letter A is more of okay, pop smear. 
Okay? Letter B, okay, is more of, for example, you have a quantus medium, let's say, IVP, intravenous pyelography, okay, because there's a quantus medium. Okay? So, what is your answer? Okay? Letter, okay, letter, okay, letter D. Okay, you may need to forego your coffee before the test. Okay, why is that so? Any stimulant should be avoided prior to the test. Yeah? Yes. Okay? Because any stimulant, of course, that's going to be detecting for the electrical impulse in your brain. Okay? Um, yes, it may cause palpitation. But more than the palpitation here, okay, always remember the reason. It will actually hyperactivate the nerve impulse transmission. Yes, okay. Yes, it will increase the heart rate. Yes, it will increase the palpitation. You are all correct. But the main reason is we don't want to increase or hyperactivate or stimulate okay, the nerve impulse transmission. Remember, we are talking about EEG. We are not talking about ECG, guys. Huh? ECG is electrocardiogram, okay? Yes, okay. We're talking about electroencephalogram. We're talking about electrodes placed on the, yeah, okay, on your head, okay? And most of the time, you know, the preparation for this, on the night before the procedure, you want to tell the client to do shampooing, okay? Because if the hair is oily, okay, the electrodes might not attach, might not be attached, okay? So, it's you know, you don't want that uh, to be falling okay, during the test, okay? So, you might want to instruct clients, okay? You do shampooing, yep, okay, to remove oil, okay, in the hair or in the hip, okay? And then, okay, your uh, question, okay, it's another question aside from uh, shampooing, to remove excess oil or any oil in there, okay? Are you going to instruct the client to be on an NPO status before the procedure? Am I going to tell my client you need to uh, stay away from any food or any any drinks? Okay, of course not. So meaning to say, can we give or can we serve breakfast? A breakfast, ang client? Yes. Okay. Because if the client will not eat, remember, okay, on the day of the exam, of course, I'm gonna be hypoglycemic. Okay. If I'm gonna be hypoglycemic, okay, that's gonna be decreasing also. The transmission of nerve impulse, okay? And that will be with, uh, lead, leading us to inaccurate result, okay? So any stimulant, okay, should be um, should be avoided, okay? Any tranquilizer also should be avoided. Any um, CNS stimulant, central nervous system stimulant, tranquilizers, okay? Um, sedatives should be avoided. Usually, most of the of the institution, okay, it needs to super go down for 24 hours before the test. Well, some others might even extend it for 24 to 48 hours before the test. Okay, what's important is we advise the client to avoid these products or consuming this or doing these things that will lead to false positive or false negative results. Okay, so the reason is you don't want coffee because, again, it will stimulate the nerve impulse transmission because we're talking about EEG, electroencephalogram. So if that is on ECG, maybe that's your answer because it may increase my heart rate, it may cause particular arrhythmia, it may cause heart palpitation. But why is that? For EEG, again, central nervous system is stimulation. So do not forget, okay? So I hope we are clear with patient preparation. Do you agree? Yeah? Okay, thank you. No problem. But, you know, your concepts are all good, okay? I just want you to remember, okay, that in your exam, it will be like that, okay? It might be uh, that specific, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's take that, for example, the one that we're actually uh, saying, okay? Why, okay, what is the main reason, okay, why do you need to forgo the coffee before the test, okay? What is your specific assessment or specific explanation to your client, A? Because it may cause palpitation. B, because it may increase your heart rate. C, because it may increase the stimulation of the nerve impulse. Let me see. Are we clear? Because you are talking about your EEG. Is that clear, guys? What do you think? Yeah? Okay. So that is an actual exam talaga. And it's going to be confusing. Okay? It's going to be confusing us if we do not know okay, what would be the best answer. So, you know, and... uh. Be any exam, guys, okay? Because, you know, soon after this MLP, we will be seeing each other for NPLEX, isn't it? That's the reality, come on. <laughs> after NLP, you're going to NPLEX, isn't it? 
and we are waiting for you okay we're just waiting for you okay and you will be actually you know applying these concepts okay once the time is right okay so moving forward okay another one next okay interpretation of results okay for example take a look at this a pregnant woman on its fourth month of pregnancy has undergone amniocentesis okay this test helps too do you agree that when we talk about synthesis, anything with synthesis, it means aspiration of something? Yes. Okay. For example, for synthesis. For synthesis, you are actually aspirating for your uh for COVID, okay, from the thoracic cavity. Okay. It's not you, it's not the nurse per se, but of course the doctor. Okay. When you say parasynthesis, parasynthesis, we're talking about aspiration of COVID from the peritoneal cavity. Okay, maybe my client is having a sinus. Okay, pericardial synthesis. Maybe there is accumulation of fluid in the pericardial sac. Okay, so in this one, there is amniocentesis because we're actually trying to um, uh, evaluate, okay, the consistency or the presence of any abnormality in the amniotic fluid. Okay, question, guys. Okay, why do you see? That amniocentesis is done on the fourth month of pregnancy. Okay. Can you do amniocentesis on the first month of pregnancy? Actually, can you do amniocentesis? Can the client okay, be subjected to amniocentesis on the first trimester? Of course, we have three trimesters. Imagine pregnancy na ito. We're going to talk about maternia. Okay. We have three trimesters, first, second, and third. Okay. So, amniocentesis is usually done okay, on the second trimester and up. Okay, beginning with the second trimester and up, okay, that is the appropriate time, the best time for amniocentesis, mainly because during the first trimester, there's no sufficient amniotic fluid yet. Got it? Okay, so meaning to say, during the first trimester, okay, during the first trimester, since, okay, natin, okay. During the first, okay, trimester, okay, since there is not enough amniotic fluid yet, okay, we cannot do amniocentesis. Okay, the question is, okay, since amniocentesis is not uh, feasible during the first trimester, what do you think? Okay, would be the diagnostic test for this pregnant client, especially if there are high risk of pregnancy. When I say high risk, maybe the client had pregnancy induced hypertension, maybe the client is having gestational diabetes mellitus, maybe there is late age. Okay? Ano ba yung late age of pregnancy natin? You are more than 35 years old. Tabi tabi po. Okay? More than 35 years old on your first pregnancy. That is a risk. Okay? Grabe siya rin geriatric. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I'm calling it late pregnancy, but Sharina is calling it geriatric pregnancy. I like it. <laughs> geriatric. Anyway, okay. So those risks, okay, those pregnant clients who are actually at risk should be tested for an abnormality. Okay. And the, on the first trimester, we are uh, trying to uh, include CVS. Okay. So what is CVS? What is CVS for you on it? Be like something. Okay? So if the question is asking you, okay, what is the advantage of periodic needle sampling over amniocentesis? Your answer is this is the earliest diagnostic test that can detect for any genetic or chromosomal abelation. Okay? So again, what's that? What's the advantage? It is the first. Yung unang uli. Okay, to me to say, of course, guys, okay, the earlier the better. The earlier I'm going to diagnose the problem, the earlier the intervention, okay, the better the prognosis, okay? So, chorionic delay sampling, that's the earliest test, okay, which can detect, okay, for your chromosomal aberration, okay? Chromosomal aberration. So, when I talk about chromosomal aberration, okay, the most common, guys, chromosomal aberration is Down syndrome. Huh? Don't forget. Okay. Yes. Okay. So when you talk about Down syndrome, are we actually talking about trisomy 21? Yes. Okay. I'm just actually including, okay, uh, some concepts for us. Oh, ma. Bakit yung maingay? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna mute you guys. Okay. You need to mute yourselves.
Oh, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyway, going back. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about amniocentesis. Okay, so amniocentesis, guys. Okay, the advantage of amniocentesis. What is the advantage of amniocentesis now? It's done later, okay, in the pregnancy, but of course, it can give you more details. Uh, it can give you more details. That is the good thing about your amniocentesis. Okay, it can not only detect, okay, for your chromosomal aberration. Your amniocentesis cannot only detect, okay, for the presence of this uh, genetic uh, problem, okay, but also, okay, find the answer. Find the choose. What is your answer? Is it A, to assess the baby's lungs if it is developed enough? Letter B, to evaluate the heart of the fetus? Letter C, to detect the presence of Down syndrome? Or letter D, to administer antibiotic to the fetus? Oh, what is your answer now? Parang nasabi ko na yata yung sagot. Okay. <laughs> Guys, okay. The answer still is, okay, your letter C. Okay. Why, why, why? Okay. Again, I'm telling you this. Okay. Your amniocentesis, okay, your amniocentesis, okay, is done in the second trimester, okay, and above and beyond. Okay. And yes, it can give you more information. Okay. If, that is done, okay, on the third trimester, okay, let's say eight month, let's say seven month, okay, your answer would be letter A. Bakit? Sa tingin mo, guys, fourth month, develop ng lungs. Yeah, you have to do that, okay? So, the fourth month, bakit ginawa? On this early pregnancy, of course, I'm not expecting that the lungs of my baby would be mature by then, okay, because that's only fourth month. Be vigilant. Be careful when you answer. Okay? Dito tayo magkakatalo. When was the uh, time that it was done? Okay? If that is done, okay, needing uh, delivery, okay, let's say, uh, nasa 7th month, okay, 8th month, 36 weeks, age of gestation, then I can answer letter A. Okay? Because yes, amniocentesis can detect fetal lung maturity. Okay? So, yun yung sinasabi ko sa'yo. The advantage of your amniocentesis over the CVS is, okay, although it is later to be done, okay, it can give you more details. Unlike CVS, okay, it can only detect for chromosomal ovulation, although it's the earliest. Pero, limited. Very limited details ang bibigay niya. Okay? Is this clear? You see, it's actually trying to, um, you know, to uh, deceive you or confuse you. So, be very vigilant. That's our point. Okay? So, let me be evaluate the heart of the fetus. No, it's not evaluating the heart of the baby, but the lungs. Because we have to check for the fetal lung maturity. Okay? Um, evaluate the heart of the fetus if you want to check for the fetal heart rate. Okay? Well, I can have the ultrasound. Fetal heart tone, I can have the doctor ultrasound. Okay? Depending on the uh, age. Okay? Depending on the age of gestation. And of course, definitely administer antibiotics. No, that is not a therapeutic. That is a diagnostic. So if that is diagnostic, it will detect for something. It's not to deliver drug to your baby. Are we clear? To the fetus. Are we clear now? Yeah? Ganda. Ganda yun. Okay, we have to really know. Okay, we need to say, as you answer your examination class, okay, you really need to know what is the answer, okay, and, okay, also, understand. Okay? We really don't want you to memorize because memorizing can only hold information for so much. Okay, But we need to memorize because no matter how it's being asked in the next uh, episode, kung ano man, okay? of course, there, there are different versions of the question. So no matter okay, how it will be asked on the kind of picture, okay, if we know the concept, we will not be confused. Okay? Definitely, we can answer this. Okay? Moving forward. Correctly, of course. Okay, so letters. Okay, so your. So letters again. Okay, next, what will we do, guys? So that's your PPI. You have a 10 item exam. Okay, test time. 10 items lang yan to teach yourself. Okay, so siguro 10 minutes. Okay, 10 items, 10 minutes, after which we will answer and I will rationalize. Agree? Agree. Okay. Yes, thank you, Sir IT, for doing that. Okay, so yeah. Okay, thanks. I'm just gonna mute myself. I will be here waiting for you guys.
Okay. Oh, Mr. IT, can, sorry, Sir IT, can we give them the link, please, of the exam? Sorry, you guys. Okay. Sir IT, please, may I request you to assist us? Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, we can now start the time, sir. Thanks. Anna Dow. What about the rest? Everyone done? Ayan. Okay. Wow, they are very, they are very, ano ah. They are very fast. Maybe they are um hungry. Okay. Okay. Again. Two minutes. Okay. Done na down. Okay. Sir IT, maybe we can stop now. They are done. They are very rapid. <laughs> so they are saying they are hungry. Okay. Thank you, Sir IT. Okay. Wow, they are very rapid. Okay. Let us now try to share our screen. Yeah. Let's wait for our IT to share the screen, guys. There. Okay. Thank you so much, Miss Payne. Okay. <laughs> Oiliness. Okay. Oiliness. Okay. So anyway, okay. Because you know, okay, we had uh we have been okay having our schedule since this very, very early this morning, you know. Okay. Anyway, okay, lang. Okay, so let us talk about your answers. Okay, Paula Maris here says, kindly mute yourselves, you guys, please. Okay, so that everyone will be, you know, okay, hearing what's uh, what's being answered here. Okay, so the answers for the questions. Okay, number one. Okay, a client or a child is admitted to the health center and is about to undergo a procedure that requires informed consent. Okay, who among the following is the best to sign an informed consent for the patient? Okay, what do you think is the answer? Your client, okay, is a child. Okay, guys, ah, the client is a child, ah. Okay, so who do you think would be the one to uh, to sign the informed consent? La besa. Letter A, the 25 year old brother who is undergoing rehab for drug addiction. Letter A, wait lang, parang, okay, drug addiction. Maybe uh, if you have drug addiction problem, maybe you have decreased level of consciousness during that time. We never know. Okay, letter B, the 40 year old father who is illiterate. The problem is, if there is problem with literacy, the client cannot read, right? The client is having a hard time to decipher or to understand the, you know, the, the stipulation, okay, on the consent, okay? So there are now two things that you need to choose from. Letter C, the 20-year-old sister who is undergoing hemodialysis, okay? Or letter D, the 37-year-old mother with seizure disorder. Come on, think about this, guys. Letter C, is there an ongoing procedure? Come on, okay. Oh, pwede ba yun? Okay, so what's your answer? Letter D, okay. Nagdadialysis ako, oh. Okay, remember, I'm undergoing you. That is, I have a procedure here. Okay, so can you get my consent? Okay, the tricky, tricky. Okay, so your letter D, okay, is it saying that there is an actual seizure attack? Is that no lie? Okay, meaning to say, sometimes no, we cannot do but to really fight. <laughs> Why is that your question? Okay. So, why is it that it? Okay. Sometimes you really need to, okay, why is that? Because it's giving me confusion. Okay. So, we don't want to be confused. Okay. It's different as when you say 37-year-old mother who is experiencing seizure, of course. Because if I am experiencing seizure, okay, I might have decreased level of consciousness. I will not understand, okay, what they're trying to explain to me. So, how can I sign it for consent? Okay. So, meaning to say, your client is going to sign the consent, okay, would be with full capacity, okay, with full understanding, okay, of the procedure that's going to take place, 
Okay. You know the problem with level C once we go through hemodialysis? If I am undergoing hemodialysis, suppose I'm your client, okay? One of the most common uh, complications of hemodialysis is your, okay, I would like you to remember this, okay? Disequilibrium syndrome, guys. Disequilibrium syndrome, okay? And the problem is, if there is disequilibrium syndrome, okay, that might lead to cerebral edema, okay? And if that is, diba, dun ka makakarating, if there is cerebral edema, do you think that can lead to increased ICP? If there is increased ICP, do you think that can lead to decrease LOC? Yes, indeed. Okay. So imagine, okay, your thinking should be like that. Okay. So what now? There is hemodialysis. So what if there is now an ongoing hemodialysis and there is a probability or possibility of developing a complication, which is disequilibrium syndrome leading to cerebral edema, increased ICP, decreased level of consciousness. Okay. So we don't want that to occur. Okay. So the answer we will be letter D, the 37 year old mother. Okay, perfect, sabi ni Sharila. Okay, tips from our CI, never over, yes, okay, never, tama siya, your CI is correct, never overanalyze, and also never underanalyze, okay, under and over, okay, to be, okay, so of course, no, in time, okay, in time, I'm telling you guys, okay, this is supposed to be developed, skill to eh, yung nakita mo pa rin yung question, okay, then you're able to analyze, okay, malito, malito, no? That is a skill, and if that is skill, over time, it's supposed to be developed. Do you agree? Yes, okay? So the answer is letter D, of course, and when you are my child, are you under my custody? Guys, who was the custody of the child? The mother or the sister? The mother, okay. So, ikaw, guys, for example, ikaw yung nanay, anak mo yan. Okay, sino mag-sign ng consent? Ang nanay o yung ate? <laughs> May ganon. Okay, yeah? The mother, of course. Okay, the mother. Okay, the mother is still, ha? So, letter D, text. Okay? So, anyway, let us move forward. Okay? Let us get another parents first, of course. Ikaw, nagpapakain dyan eh. Okay, so ikaw, mga <laughs> ito. Anyway, this, no, kidding aside, okay, it's the, uh, the custody of the parent. You are with, you're living on my roof, okay, you are my child, okay, so I have the right to sign the consent for my child. Okay, number two, which of the following is the most appropriate diagnosis exam that confirms, eto wala niyo ibang sagot ah. Okay. Ano ibang sagot, mama? Okay. Baka nag-ECG ka pa dyan, ha? Okay. Most appropriate diagnostic exam. Correct? Okay. Nothing else but DP monitoring. Okay. Ultrasound, chest x-ray, EDG. Okay. Not the answer. So, DP monitoring. Perfect. Okay. So, this one, okay, this is what you say, never overanalyze. Okay. This is the most applicable, perfect version or application of that one. Okay. DP monitoring. Next. What about this? Okay. Which of the following conditions can be detected by pelvic ultrasound? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. A, B, C, or D. Come on. What's your answer? Question. Guys. Okay. Most of the time, not check for your options. If they are presenting the same ideas, okay, the answer is not in there. Okay. C. Oh. What's wrong with Oh, ano mo nasagot? Okay. Your answer would be letter A. Congenital defects in the fetal structure, fetal gender, and trophoblastic disease. Okay. First thing first, why remove letter D? Okay. Can, can ultrasound detect fetal lung maturity? Oh. Yung letter C, may fetal lung maturity? Letter D, may fetal lung maturity? Oh. What did I say? What did we say? Okay. Think of something na ano meron dito. Okay, na mali. Okay. So, what can detect for fetal lung maturity? It can be by, sabi mo nga, amniocentesis. Okay. And also, alpha fetopotin analysis. Okay. We're gonna discuss that once we go there, the maternal. Okay. But from the from the time lang that I've already discussed to you, okay, it's the amniocentesis. Okay. Doon lang muna tayo. Pero we have your AFP analysis, alpha fetopotin analysis pa. Okay. So, BCMD cannot... Hmm. Pagpaulit-ulit ang word. Okay. Yes, okay. Yan. I, most of the time, it's the idea that we are looking after. Kasi sometimes it's not the word. Eh. Sometimes it's gonna be rephrased. Sometimes it's gonna be rewarded. So we have to know that they are still working with that specific concept or idea even though they are using other words for. 
Okay? Now, what is a uh, fetal structure? Okay, we want to check for congenital defect. We want to check for the fetal gender, whether it's a, uh, it's a, a male or a female. Tropoblastic disease, okay? Okay, so that's actually your, no? Tropoblastic, it is a pain problem in the placenta. Okay, so whenever you hear the word tropoblastic disease, it is a problem in the placenta. Because when we talk about tropoblast, we're talking about the placenta. Okay, for example, you hear the word GTD. Okay, we call it, okay, gestational, okay, gestational, guys, tropoblastic disease or gestational tropoblastic disorder. Okay? And we are talking about problem in the placenta. Give me one example of tropoblastic disease, H. mole. Are you familiar with H. mole? High that TD for mole? Okay. So we will go there po. When you talk about the maternal, mga molar pregnancy mo. Okay. Oh, that is the most common GTT. Okay. So it can detect for the placenta. It can detect for the baby. Okay. But definitely it cannot detect, okay, fetal lung maturity. Okay, so again, okay, sabi ng isa kanina, sabi to me, do not change your answer, don't forget, okay, unless you are 100% sure that you committed the wrong one. Okay, never change your answer. Tandaan mo yan, okay? So let us move forward po. Another one, next. I'm sorry. Okay, so next, number four. Okay, which of the following should the nurse first assess first? Tignan mo to, ha? Okay, before an amniotomy is performed. Remember, we are talking about, okay, before. What's your answer? Okay, sabi ko na letter yung sagot niyo eh. Letter D is the answer. Okay, the answer is that way. Okay, so guys, this is the thing. Ah. If the question is, okay, you are checking, okay, for amniotomy, okay, because what is amniotomy to begin with? Amniotomy, guys, it's actually uh, our artificial rupture of the membrane. Okay, so when you say amniotomy, that is actually artificial, okay, artificial rupture of the membrane. ROM ka ko na lang, okay, artificial rupture of the membrane, okay. Maybe because you want to induce labor, okay, maybe because uh, the client is now uh, due, the, due, due date mo na, okay, and then still there's no uh, signs and symptoms of labor and delivery. And we want to induce labor, okay, we want to, we want to actually uh, facilitate labor. Nag-induce ka, induction of labor, okay? Artificial uh, ROM, okay? Or rupture of membrane, okay? Now, so, if you're talking about, okay, ang tanong mo kasi tingnan mo ha, which of the following should the nurse first assess a patient? Okay? Your patient is the maternal. Kasi siya yung ia artificial mo, di ba? Sino patient? Yung baby o yung mother? Muna. Pag amniotomy. Patient. Iba mother. Mother. Mother, okay, the mother. The patient is the mother. Although the patient also uh, is also pertaining to the baby, the fetal heart rate. But of course, check the mother first because she's the one who's gonna undergo the amniotomy. Okay? So what now if there is blood distension? There are two uh, reasons why. Okay? Number one, if there is blood distension, maybe because, okay, there's a blood distension because it is a full bladder. Okay. The problem is, okay, if there is full bladder, it will stop or it will delay or it will prevent the baby's engagement in the pelvis. Okay? Hindi kasi pwede yon. If you have artificial rupture of the membrane, you have to make sure that the presenting part would be at the level of the pelvis. Ang tawag kasi natin doon, guys, level zero. Okay? Or yung tinatawag natin, we call it station zero. So, meaning to say, when you say station zero, the presenting part is supposed to be at the level of the ischial spine. So, dapat nandoon. Okay? Dapat naka-descend ka. Okay? There should be a proper engagement or proper descent. Engage. Yun na nga. Okay? Because, of course, after the artificial rupture of the membrane, we are going to anticipate that there would be labor and delivery. Are we clear? So it cannot, uh, it cannot be, um, it cannot be done. Okay, it cannot be um, accomplished when the presenting part is not engaged, and the full bladder can prevent that. Okay, from avoiding. So, pag may bladder distension, ta, uh, ka muna. Okay, you have to try to avoid first before amniotomy is performed. Are we clear? That's the first. Okay. Secondly, 
it, that is uh, cold daughter, maybe, uh, oh, oh, sorry, plan extension, gap sana, number one is cold daughter. Number two, maybe, okay, my client is having polyhydramnios. Familiar with polyhydramnios, guys? Okay? When we talk about polyhydramnios, it's going to be excessive amniotic fluid. Okay? So what? Okay, if there's polyhydramnios, okay? Once you do amniotomy and the mother has uh, polyhydramnios, okay, there might be a complication of possible uterine rupture. Okay? Of course, I don't want that. If there's uterine rupture, that can lead to hemorrhage. Okay? Or that uh, I'm posing, okay, I am actually increasing the risk of the mother and the baby for infection. That's why I don't want bladder distension. Okay? So now, okay, if the question is, okay, which of the following should the nurse first assess after amniotomy is performed, check for the fetal heart rate because you want to know, okay, whether the baby is now having fetal distance. Are we clear? Walang bali sa A. Okay? It's just not, it's the first. Okay? So, you can actually detect for fetal heart rate, okay? But the question is, before an amniotomy, okay, it's bloody distension. If there's no bloody distension there, you can answer A. Ha? Pag wala ang DA at sagot, pero may D, D at sagot. Okay? Pero ang tanong, what should the nurse attest first after an amniotomy is performed? Ano nang sagot talaga? Walang iba kung di get rid of. Are we clear? Check, okay, for the preposition. Check for the conjunction, Okay. Pati now and pronoun me, no? Ano ba to? Before or after? Are we clear? Tricky? Guys, are you still there? Okay, thank you. Okay, tricky. Okay, pero doable. Okay, tricky ba? Okay, you will never be tricky. Sabi mo sa rin mo, I will never be tricky. Alam ko yan. <laughs> doable. Okay? So anyway, anyway, check for the pita heart rate. Okay? And also, guys, check for the temperature of the mommy. The mother, the temperature, okay? Because you're talking about maybe there's an infection eh. Ha? Okay. There might be an infection. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I hope that you are learning, okay? Moving forward, guys. Another one. Next. Okay. Which of the following is the first standard step in oxygen therapy the nurse should do? First step. Isn't it you have to assess? Oh, yung galing. Very nice. Letter A, okay, assess the patient's condition first, okay. So, check the chart for order flow rate and oxygen, of course, between the chart and the patient, push your priority. Patient, okay, or oh. why not letter C? Equipment, okay, Pre patient first before the equipment. Why not letter D? Okay, before you prepare the patient, eh, mang patient naman yung letter D, eh, kaso nga, assess first before you prepare. I guess first, okay? So, very nice. Okay, another one. Okay, next. Number six. Ay, yung bilis na. <laughs> Sorry. Which of the following is the most common complication, okay, that patients may develop while on IV therapy? Ang bilis, eh, plebitis, okay? Why not, um, why not, uh, why not infiltration? Kasi plebitis is the most common. Yes, okay. Plebitis, it means inflammation of the, inflammation of the vein. Okay? So, what is infiltration, guys? Kunyari, ito yung cells mo, ha? Okay? Please, the blood vessel. Okay? O. For example, okay, na maga ang blood vessel. Okay? If this one is inflamed, this is your plebitis. Agree? Okay. Now, just in case there is an infiltration, meaning to say, you are correct, the fluid that is supposed to be inside the blood vessel is going out. Yan yung leakage. Yan po yung infiltration. It's out of vein. Okay? Now, what is the difference between infiltration and extravasation? Okay? When you talk about extravasation, okay, what is actually leaking, okay, are the vesicant drugs or vesicant no, substances. O ano ba yung mga vesicant na yan? Yung po mga blister forming. Okay, yung mga, okay, let's say for example, okay, chemotherapeutic drug, okay, mga blister, blister forming, vesicant fluid, blister forming, okay, so when you say, nakakasugat, nakakasunog, so we call it extravasation, okay, so take note, infiltration and extravasation, both of them, there is leakage, the difference is in infiltration, that's the normal IV fluid, okay, 
NSS, okay, LR, Lakikan Liver Solution. But when you say extravasation, what's actually being linked would be the blistered forming fluids. Okay? Oh, alam mo yan. Okay. Embolism, of course, you know that there is an obstruction. Okay? And that is not actually related. Okay? So, ano daw? Plebitis. Inflammation of your blood vessel. Yes, no? So, when we go to chemotherapy, you will see that. Okay? The extravasation, the vesicant, example of vesicant drugs, adriamycin, doxorubicin, okay, okay, chemotherapeutic agents. Okay? So, moving forward. Number seven. When a patient is to undergo a sonogram, of course, that is an ultrasound. Which section of the hospital should the nurse coordinate the procedure with? Naman. Morgue. <laughs> Morgue agad. Okay. Pag-ultrasound lang ako eh. Okay. Answer is laboratory. Eating aside. Okay. Laboratory. Operation room ER is the laboratory. Easy. Okay. Next. Which of the following imaging tests? Ah, we already discussed this a while ago. Sana wala na nakalimot dito. Okay? So, yes. That is your ultrasound. Ano ba ultrasound? Oh. So, yes. Abdob na ultrasound. Doppler. Ma'am, may Doppler. Doppler sonography. Okay? Girls condition your cholecystitis eh. Diba? Cholelitalysis. Doppler ultrasound that will detect for the blood flow in the blood vessel. So, that has nothing to do with the stone. Okay? So, let me see. Abdominal ultrasound. You already discussed that with a transfusion. Okay? And then, at saka question and answer agreement. You're talking about gallbladder, gallstone. So, that is abdomen. So, dalawa na lang eh. X-ray and ultrasound. So, that's gonna be ultrasound. Okay. Seven is laboratory. Ken. Okay. All right. Moving forward, okay. Next, okay, number nine. Okay. A physician orders MRI to a patient. This procedure is done to detect. What is the best answer? Okay. Um, electrical impulse in the brain nurses, that would be for your EEG. Okay. Level of oxygen in the brain, that may be polysomnography. Okay. Oh, see? What did we say a while ago? Okay. If that is MRI CT scan, isn't it we are talking about your, we're talking about your tissue, we're talking about the cell, we're talking about imaging. Okay. Although letter A is good, letter A wala tayong problema eh. Wala tayong problema sa letter A, good naman. But what is the better choice? Oh, lagi tayo sa better ha? Okay, letter A. Non-hemorrhagic or soft tissue injury. So, provided in the options there's no letter D, then we can answer A. But since there's letter D, letter D tayo. Okay, non-hemorrhagic or the tissue. No tissue, organ, cells, okay, muscle in the brain. So, that is letter D. Correct. Okay. No problem. Okay, so ganyan. Basta letter A is good naman. Okay, letter D is better lang. Okay, and number 10. Oh, what do you think is the answer? How should the nurse best prepare the client? Okay. Letter A, avoid stressful mind activities. Parang wala tayong sinabing ganyan. Letter B, avoid using shampoo. Ano sabi? Di ba mag-shampoo ka? Oh. No food intake. What did we say? You have to eat. Because if you do not eat, you're gonna have hypoglycemia that can alter the nerve impulse transmission. Okay. What's the answer? Correct. Okay, gonna take a pill, stimulant, and sleep and alcohol because alcohol is CNS depressant for 24 to 14 hours. Yay! <laughs> so, gusto natin yan, okay? 7, 8, and an average 10 out of 10. Wow. Okay. But don't be hard on yourself. There's always a room for improvement. For example, you have 5, you have 4, so what? So what? Okay. There's room for learning. Do you agree? Positive lang tayo. Are you clear, guys? Are you clear, class? I hope you learn. Okay. Nice to meet you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because I'm going to attend to my another class again. I'm, I'm going back to uh, my another class. Okay? Ma'am, so, thank you, guys. Ma'am, sorry. Okay. Pakiana po ng question number ano, seven. Oh, seven. Okay, seven. Yeah, laboratory. Okay, got it? The number seven, laboratory. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay. 
again, nice to meet you all. Okay, thank you all. God bless you all. Bye. See you soon. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Okay. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, sir IT. Thank you, sir JC. Thank you so much. Bye.